Good morning from another sunny day in London. Today we have yet another interview. So previously we had Mark Fernley on the channel. Many of you loved him, asked for more interviews. And today we have yet another London photographer by the name of Mike Chudley. I'm sure if you watch a lot of photography YouTube, you'd have heard of his name. If not, he's a street photographer based here in London. And his approach to photography is so different to mine and I'm very intrigued to find out more about his process. He's very much subject driven over light driven like me and I think you can learn quite a lot in terms of composition, in terms of spotting interesting subjects and spotting moment, fleeting moments as you're walking around. So I hope you enjoy this chat with Mike and what else can I say? Oh yeah, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. That's about it. That's a really, really cool character here. Hopefully you can hear me, there's the guy with the yellow umbrella. And if you can crop in enough, that's a pretty... Try not to get run over by the bike. Ooh. Let's have a look, let's have a look. This is cool. Focus. Oh, I like that. Well, That's really screen. cool. Awesome. What works here? Yeah. Yellow umbrella, yellow lines cutting straight through the composition yeah. as the gentleman is looking that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you've got the colors look great, the shape and the composition all align, and then the, the character looking the same way. How would you best describe your photography? Candid. It's probably the most common theme running throughout. Subject focus, we spoke about this earlier. I'm definitely drawn to interesting things or people. Uh, One-off moments, things that will never happen again, I think is probably a good... If it's something that can't be repeated, then I'm probably going to be... In, or like, I'll lean more towards that. Whereas if it's something... If it's a type of photo that anyone could take, anywhere in the world and it's probably not that interesting just personal taste um, yeah I'm drawn to a lot of like Matt Stewart's one of my favourite photographers um, Gary Winogrand John Merowitz you know that I'm trying to name the classics everyone knows yeah, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. because the type of work they, they did was one off Never, it can never be repeated yeah. if I see a moment that's like you can't quite believe that it happened but it did yeah that's the magic, I think, in street photography. But that's like almost impossible to do. Um, that's why we spend too many hours walking way too far yeah. <laughs> to come home with no photographs. But in the long run, hopefully, yeah, you do get some stuff. But stuff that can never be hap never be repeated, candid, one-off, kind of like one in a million kind of stuff. So earlier on, I didn't film the chat that I was having with Mike about subject versus light and architecture. And what he mentioned is that he noticed in my photography that I'm drawn to light, architecture, composition first, and then I find a subject to, to kind of fit in. Whereas with Mike's approach, he looks for the subject first, and then the light can be a bonus. So subject, composition, light is how he works. And to be honest, I think that's arguably a better approach because you're not then limited by the light, whereas I am physically limited by the light. So as I've been moaning about the uh, weather over the last two, three weeks, I've not been out shooting that much because there was no light. Whereas for Mike, this is not an issue. You can just go out whenever. So it's a very interesting difference in approach to photography. Something that's definitely worthwhile thinking about. Technically, let's have a look at that. Man, that is lovely. The light's so nice, isn't it? It's like soft enough. With little pockets. Yeah. You can be waiting for an hour and have nothing. Wait for 30 seconds and um it's not in the space for me. No, I know. It's just if it was just a bit more to the uh, left. Okay, so he's a bit more to the left, hopefully. Getting in the space. This is Alright, let's have a look. Oh I like that. That's really nice. I might even throw that in black and white to yeah. emphasize the contrast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. So next question is, when did you start shooting and what made you pick up a camera in the first place? So I was like 12, 13 uh, at the skate park. I think there's so many people in the photography world that started at the skate park. Yeah. Because when you're doing BMX stuff or skateboard stuff, someone's doing something interesting 
someone needs to record it, right? Yeah. So like yeah. taking photos and making videos came hand in hand. And even though online it looks like I'm just a photographer, I actually spend an equal amount of time making videos and filming stuff for work as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was like 12, 13 at the skate park. I got a camera for Christmas. Very grateful for that and never looked back. Yep. So this happened when I was doing a video with James where we went to that street in, uh, in Lisbon and I've been there hundreds of times and for James it was the first time and he was just like, oh wow, this is so cool. Well, we're now here in Barbican with Mike and even though he's been here before, he's not been to these specific areas. Yeah, that was like two or three years ago. So. And that was two or three years ago, right. So he's like, oh my God, the night's amazing, da 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 da. Whereas I kind of just walk past it because I've been here so many times. So it'll be interesting to see how he would photograph certain parts of this place. Something that, um, just on that, something yeah. that people don't, that if you can activate novelty in the photography, yeah. whenever you go out and take photos, it just gives you another reason to be enthusiastic about something. So I'm excited about this place because I've not been here in a long time, the light's good, I'm looking at interesting shapes, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Whereas you're just like, eh, I've seen it before. Yeah. Whereas we're both doing the exact same thing right now, we're yeah. here to take photos, and I'm having more fun than you, yeah. purely because of novelty. So, for any reason you can activate a little bit of novelty in your photography, I think it's smart. Go somewhere new, use something different, be with someone different, who knows? Just see this gentleman chilling. You can kind of not make out that there's anyone there, because his colours blend into the environment. It's like very subtle. It'd be amazing if he like peeped his head out or just something. But he's vaping, so I might be able to get a, some smoke or something. Okay, next question is what camera and lens do you use and why did you pick that camera and lens? Like an M11P and the 35mm Summer Lux as of last week. I treated myself, it was my birthday. Uh, before this, I was using a Leica Q2 with a 28 and I also use the Fujifilm X100D with the 35. So, kind of compact setups. Yeah. Um, wide lenses, I stay between 28 and 35, they're my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, and on this specifically, the way a camera feels to yeah. use, it's arguably just as important as the images it takes. Yes. So, I thoroughly enjoy using a camera like this. And the yeah. Q2 is amazing. And yes, you have to pay for it. Yes. Let's just, the elephant in the room. Yes, it is ridiculously expensive. But same with people that like their cars. They want a Porsche, a Ferrari, because they give off a certain type of experience. Yeah. Whatever that is for you as a photographer, it'll be different. So I'm willing to, yeah, pay for that experience, I guess. But the final result is negligible. You could you could get that on a Canon, a Sony, a Fuji. It makes yeah. no difference what gear you actually use in terms of right. end result, I don't think. Mm. I'm not gonna tell you that this lens is better than every other lens because let's see the photographs and then discuss. But right. the experience, the day out with a camera like this, I love it. But more specifically about the lenses, I like going wide, trying to focus more on the subjects. If you use a 50 and onwards, like an 85 millimeter, I just find yeah. it so difficult to tell a wider picture or explain, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, show a scene in its full context. Yeah. Um, I'm not so keen on just like 1.8, the back of someone's head. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it might actually be a sharp photograph, but what's the story? Like, what's the point yeah, of the yeah, image? Yeah. Um, but yeah, everyone to their own. I know I see a lot of that work on Instagram. It gets a lot of likes and I, I sometimes think, well, what's the point? It's not really yeah, what, yeah. something more. Like, I want to, I want to see something more from it. So. For me, going a bit wider, trying to get multiple subjects, multiple points of interest, yeah, it's harder to do, but that's something that I've, over the last like three years, I've pretty much always been at 35, around that anyway. Cool. Yeah, we just stumbled into a really cool scene where you've got, there's a guy sitting there in the window, the light is beautiful, you've got color, you've got straight lines, you've got composition. We both walked away with a different photo. I'll show Mike's photo now, and then after that, I'll show you my photo as well but yeah really cool little scene so at the moment if you go on let's say Instagram and you look up street photography you can kind of get the same sort of stuff very cinematic looks amazing looks like it could be a still out of a movie yeah and that stuff looks amazing yeah. um, that's what I tend to go for myself as well however with your photography it's not that it's with your photography it seems to be 
a lot more. You have to look at it. You have to study it. You know, there's a lot of elements going on cool. where, and the color grade is almost not the last priority. So in this cinematic world, your focus is on people and moments. Why? So you touched on it there with a lot of the time, the interesting point of the photograph could be the color grade for a lot of work on Instagram, for example, which means a lot of that work can be done in post behind a laptop in a nice coffee shop, wherever you are. And the focus is less on the fact that the photographer was out there taking the photographs, finding interesting things. And I think, especially with street photography, everyone's eye is so different, or it can be so different, that when a photographer really niches down or gets specific about what they're looking for, mm. the photographs are all different. So I can go out with four different ph photographers and we all walk in the same area, but because we're all interested in different things, we come away with different photographs, as opposed to what you see a lot of the time on Instagram is the classic teal and orange. I know that's a bit dated now, but because teal and orange look good, you could just apply that to any photograph. So the focus mm. is less about the moment and more about the final image or the grade or the way you edit, which then doesn't separate your work from anyone else's. So on Instagram, a lot of it, you could put it all in a bag and pull out a random photograph and yeah, I can't yeah. tell you who took it. Right. Now, if you did that with, I don't know, more, maybe more my style, you could go, oh, Mike took that because yeah. that thing will never happen again. Or yeah. Mike was out that day when that certain thing happened. Yeah. So he was able to get that. Whereas you can't just put that in a bag and pull it out and it's just anyone's work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, there's definitely levels to this. Whereas if you wanted to focus on the grade, the cinematic, the composition, the light, and you're really you know, excellent at it, then your work will stand out. Yes. Now, if it's a pretty picture, then it's obviously a pretty picture for yeah. whatever reason. But if it's only pretty because of the grade, then I don't think it's worth looking at longer, if that makes sense. All right, the next question is, at what point did you feel like you were really making progress with photography? Was there a particular moment when you thought, okay, now I'm starting to get this? So thinking of that question, there's one photo I think of immediately. And it's a woman in a red coat and a guy in a beige coat and they walk past this poster that's also red and beige. The colors are great, the timing's great, the composition's really satisfying. And that was two years ago and I yeah. still think of that photograph as like, I'm so pleased I took it. But on that point, the more you go out to take photos and the more photographs you look at of other people that are really great, I think your expectations keep on rising. So it's like an endless, it, it seems to get more difficult yeah. as time goes yeah, on. Yeah, so yeah. five years ago, I would have been satisfied with just a nice picture. But yeah. now that same picture five years later, I'm like, ah, I could probably do more. Now, if I can do more, it's subjective. Maybe I get the photo one day, maybe I don't get the photo. Yeah. But like that journey will always, it, it would go on forever of, wanting more, not being satisfied, I guess that's a probably a lesson of yeah. life, right? But I've seen it a lot with other photographers that I know are very, very good. They seem to be less satisfied as time goes on. Yeah. Because the photographs get harder and harder to take. Yeah. I don't think there's, I don't think you can avoid that. But yeah. the photo I would have, to answer your question, there would have been a photo 10 years ago I loved, but now I'm like, and now five years goes on, five years goes on. I can't answer that question thinking that I've made it, but yeah, there's a few photographs sense. that pop up over the, over the years that I think that's great. But then it's just like, okay, on to the next one. And over all these years, what's the biggest lesson you've learned about photography? It's cliche. Very cliche. I've heard this before, but it's, it is all about the process. Yeah. The pursuit of getting the photo is better than the photo itself. So the fact that we're out today just wandering around taking photographs is as fun as going, oh, look at that photograph. Yeah. The photographs are something to show off the time you've put into it. So you have something tangible at the end of it. But yeah, yeah. the figuring out the lighting or the weather or what gear we're going to use or meeting new people, looking, observing the world, people watching, all of that is the fun bit. That's the bit I enjoy, like the process of yeah, day to day. Yeah attempting to get the photos. And the photos are just a bonus. And if I asked you, let's say I'm a complete beginner, and I'd say, can you give me your best piece of advice? Would it be that, or would it be something else? Good question. If a beginner wanted to, what's the goal here, to take pretty pictures? Yes. I would probably be really specific about trying to find certain types of compositions and maybe going all in on black and white for a little bit, going all in on 50 millimeter for a little bit. So then you start understanding 
I guess it's like you have to know the rules in order yeah. to break them. So it take I think it takes like two or three years Minimum. before you even okay I know what a good photograph is, and then you can start finding your style, whatever that means, and being you know a bit more free with it. But I think in the early days niching down and I mean I was taking photos of BMX and skateboarding for years which made me kind of understand the basics of composition and spacing and camera settings and now I know all that I can break the rules and kind of do what I want so yeah if I was giving advice to a beginner it would be to um, learn the fundamentals and get that in the bag before you start playing around with being creative so next question is is there any non-photography related skill that you think has benefited you in your photography? Or is there something that you do outside of photography that benefits you in your photography? Now, I have an answer, I will share that in a minute, but what's so yours? This might be a, like an overarching life thing, not like a being able to do the Rubik's Cube kind of skill. But yeah, like, yeah. Um, with skateboarding, skateboarding is, skateboarding is 99% failure. So you spend a year trying to learn how to do a kickflip. So you might be, the amount of hours it'll take for you to land one mm. is very similar to being out trying to get good street photographs. Yeah. Because you can be out all day and, I mean, if you want to take pretty pictures like we discussed earlier, that's a lot easier to do. But if you want to capture truly unique moments, they almost never happen. Or you have yeah. to, it's the right time, right place. It's so hard to do. So the idea of getting used to failure was something that I was already happy to accept as a skateboarder. You're probably not going to land most of the tricks you try. Yeah, yeah. As a photographer, you're probably not going to be successful at most of the things you take photos of. So I always, I've, I have skateboarded to thank for that in the photography, I think. Because a lot of people might go out on their first day of photography and expect results instantly, and that, that's not the case. Now, that was a great answer. And as I alluded to, my answer to this question is, I look at photography in the same way as working out and building muscle. You can go to the gym five times a week, but then week to week you will not see any progress. Month to month you will not see any progress, and it's very easy to get completely discouraged by it. However, if you keep persisting, if you you know do your three, four days a week, and you do it over time, and you do it, and you do it, and you do it, two years down the line you look in the mirror and you'll be like, what the fuck? Like, you'll have a completely different physique. That's what I'm trying to get to. But anyway, the point being is that day to day you might not see any real progress. However, this is a long game. This is a marathon, it's not a sprint. So keep putting in the work day to day and over time you'll see huge strides in your photography. Sweet, we're now onto the last question and that is where do you see photography going over the next 10 years? I don't think it'll be much different. I don't think cameras can really evolve. I'm saying that, I could be totally off, couldn't I? I don't think cameras, <laughs> I don't think cameras can get much better. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of AI, I think that'll change the use case of photographs. So a lot of companies, a lot of businesses, it might be easier for them to use AI. And we're seeing it already, I see it all the time. <laughs> but I think there'll still be a place for photographers to capture unique moments, especially with street photography, that can never be replicated. Um, in 10 years, yeah, I don't think it'd be much different. I think businesses will grab a hold of AI and use it because it'll be cheap and effective. But as far as individuals going out to capture moments, like landscape stuff, portrait stuff, street stuff, I think that'll, that might even become more valuable because it's real. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that video with Mike. I hope you've got some different or new insights into street photography and into his approach. Please leave your comments down below. And I'll see you in the next video with another London photographer that many of you might be familiar with. For now though, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. I'd like to take a moment and thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. It's never been easier to start your own business, blog or YouTube channel and turn your hobby into an income. Squarespace offers the perfect all-in-one solution that is designed to take the headache and hassle out of the entire process. First and foremost, this is your website where you can showcase your product or service in a clean and professional way. Secondly, this is your online store where you can sell your products and services with powerful tools built in. Thirdly, this is your blog where you can write about your industry, therefore increase Google ranking. And there are many other built-in tools that allow you 
to create members areas, send newsletters, schedule appointments and much more. Finally, this is all available on your laptop or in your pocket. Add powerful analytics and you have an ideal all-in-one package to run your business. For a free trial followed by 10% off your first purchase, please use the link in the description or use code RomanFox when you check out. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring and thank you for watching.